The topic is the Constitution and the Civil War Amendments, Amendments 13, 14, and 15. And the guest is Dr. Julian Blackshear, who has given us some information relative to the Constitution as well as the 13th Amendment to the Constitution. And of course, Dr. Blackshear, let's uh, have you to uh, continue your discussion in reference to these three amendments. Well, when we, well, before the break, I was trying to uh, emphasize the point that the 13th Amendment that abolishes slavery abolishes the characteristics of being a slave as well. And one of the characteristics of a slave is lacking the ability to make or engage in contracts on the same terms available to all citizens of this country. So the 13th Amendment abolishes that as well. So if black people are prevented from entering to negotiations with uh, various uh, racially exclusive emissions policies of white businesses and so forth, they are still, uh, that's violation of the 13th Amendment. They deny and, the right to make contracts. Right, it denies them the right to make mm -hmm. contracts, which means that they are, they, they're, they're not really free, because mm -hmm. that's the characteristic mm -hmm. of a freeman. Mm -hmm. And the specific statute that you would file a lawsuit on mm -hmm. to prevent such a, con a, con a conduct would be Title 42, United States Code, Section 1981, mm -hmm. which is frequently used in employment discrimination cases. Mm -hmm. Now, the 14th Amendment, uh, if you listen to the wording when it says, no state mm -hmm. shall deprive a person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, or deny unto them equal protection of the laws, it is saying, for our purposes today, mm -hmm that the government cannot engage in private discriminatory conduct. But it's also saying the government cannot even get involved in it. So, but before the 14th Amendment becomes applicable, there must be, as we call it, some state action, some state involvement, mm -hmm. some state connection uh, with the private activity in order for the 14th Amendment to apply mm -hmm. to prohibit it. So we come up with three approaches right. to make sure that that occurs. Uh, the most common approach used is the agency approach. In the old case of Shelley versus Kramer, uh, is a good example of the racially exclusive, uh, or race, or racially restrictive covenants, mm -hmm. where you have these uh, deeds that would say that you can't sell this property to members of African mm -hmm. ancestry. Well, in Shelley versus Kramer, a person violated that deed and made an attempt to sell the property. Mm -hmm. Well, the government through its third branch of government, mm -hmm. which is uh, the government of Missouri, through its third branch, which is the court, mm -hmm. enforced that deed because it is a contract. Mm -hmm. But enforcing that deed, the government got involved in discriminatory mm -hmm. conduct. Mm -hmm. And once, and once that enforced. happened, the 14th mm -hmm. Amendment now becomes applicable mm -hmm. and it prohibited the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So you can have racially restricted covenants and deeds all over the place, mm -hmm. but there's no court that can enforce it because mm -hmm. then the government through the courts will be involved well, in that in discriminatory mm -hmm. conduct. Mm -hmm. And so now we have satisfied the requirement of state action, state involvement, sufficient for the 14th Amendment to, to apply and mm -hmm. prohibit it. Mm -hmm. The other approach is the encouragement approach. Okay. The old case of Reitman versus Mulkey in 1968, where you go through an initiative referendum to amend your constitutions in California. Mm -hmm. You had this person that submitted a petition to amend the constitution by forbidding uh, municipalities mm -hmm. from passing any fair housing laws. Now, what that means is, once the Constitution is amended to say that, and it was amended to say that, then mm -hmm. cities are no longer able to pass mm -hmm. laws prohibiting mm -hmm. racial discrimination in housing. The so now, engaged in discrimination itself in real Well, sense. it's not. It's mm -hmm. what it's doing. It's encouraging mm -hmm. people who may be inclined to discriminate mm -hmm. to do so because mm -hmm. they know the cities no and longer have their power yeah. to pass okay. any laws prohibiting mm -hmm. it. Okay. You see? Yes. So that's the encouragement mm -hmm. approach. Mm -hmm. The states have gotten involved in it. Then the old case of uh, Wilmington, uh, Burton versus Wilmington Park and Authority. Mm -hmm. That's taking the agency approach again. What we got here now is like the Nashville Housing Authority. You got mm -hmm. a lease arrangement. Well, the, the, the Wilmington Park and Authority is a landlord, and then you got this cafeteria mm -hmm. uh, in, the in the airport that uh, there was a tenant. Well, mm -hmm. this cafeteria excluded black people from mm -hmm. uh, going in there. And in doing so, 
um, the government is now involved mm -hmm. in that prior discrimination because the government was a landlord mm -hmm. of the facility okay. where prior discrimination mm -hmm. was being practiced in. Mm -hmm. So the 14th Amendment now can become involved and prohibit that kind of conduct. Mm -hmm. Now the third approach is the public function approach. Mm -hmm. It's just simply saying public accommodation facilities that open their doors to the public mm -hmm. cannot cherry pick and, dis and, and determine which member of the public they can mm -hmm. admit mm -hmm. because black folks are uh, members of the public mm -hmm. too. So that's one reason why if you take the f public function approach, the 14th Amendment will prohibit that kind of conduct mm -hmm. because black people are just as much a part of the public, public. as mm -hmm. Uh, as anyone else mm -hmm. that these businesses are established mm -hmm. specifically to serve. Mm -hmm. Not to serve some members of the public, mm -hmm. not private clubs, mm -hmm. but public accommodations like Crystals, mm -hmm. like McDonald's, okay. like Wendy's, they are open specifically for the purpose of serving the, the public. public. Mm -hmm. Now when you, and then you cannot say black folks are not a part of the public, <laughs> but when you try to exclude people from being a part of the public, public. Mm -hmm. then the 14th Amendment, mm -hmm. uh, the government is involved mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. And then the 14th Amendment uh, is mm -hmm. invoked mm -hmm. to prohibit such mm -hmm. conduct. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so in, in reality, uh, it's, it's much greater than uh, citizenship as such. Well, how, how is it that... Well, we the 14th Amendment, they, they say that in eighth grade history, the uh, 14th uh, Amendment well, is designed to make Talk. you a citizen. Uh -huh. But the 14th Amendment didn't, uh, uh, prohibits uh, the Fourth Amendment guarantees the black people shall be treated equally Good. under the law. All right. And in so making that guarantee, obviously, you are a citizen. citizen. Uh -huh. See, that's how that works. Is that how that, but, yeah. But, but, uh -huh. you, but, but the best way to teach it is rather than the simplistic notion that mm. the Fourteenth Amendment makes you a citizen, citizen, you just simply say the Fourteenth Amendment guarantees that black people shall be treated equally, equally. Uh -huh. under the law okay. with everybody else. Uh -huh. It prohibits discrimination. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So if a black person is not a citizen, then you're being discriminated against uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> in favor of other people okay. who are made uh -huh. citizens. So when you, when you grant people equal protection of the law, one of the benefits of that uh -huh. is citizenship. Uh -huh. But there are a thousand other benefits of that, you see. Well, now, now, now would you not say uh, over the last 35 seconds that we have here, and then this will sort of get you into a 14th and 15th amendment, that uh, right, the very, very fair, uh, yeah, no, you, the yeah, you might have, might, this, is, right. this is something we might see in reference right. to that, that very, very fact that uh, you've uh, outlined uh, all of these characteristics of uh, the 14th amendment, uh, what about when Africans first came out of slavery in 1865 and there was no state statement in reference to uh, their citizenship or their rights and et cetera? Would this not be just a sort of a bridge to try to bring that in, bring citizenship in? That is to teach that. Yeah, what the 14th Amendment does make you a citizen. And of course, let us take this short commercial break and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, break. We're talking to Dr. Julian Black.